Okay. Good morning and welcome to Keep Middlesex Moving's webinar series. I am Lynn Cuevas, your host. For those of you not familiar with KMM, we are the Transportation Management Association for Middlesex County. We work with employers, local and state government agencies to promote programs aimed at traffic mitigation, sustainability, and economic development. To learn more about us, please visit KMM.org or shoot me an email. Before we begin today's webinar, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping details. If you are turning, tuning in from Facebook, please place your questions in the comments. This webinar will be recorded and can be sent to you along with the presentation at your request. I now turn it over to Bill Neary, our Executive Director. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, good morning. Today, we're very happy and very pleased that we have a special guest on our webinar doing something that's uh, not only special for uh, us at KMM, it's also special for the entire state of New Jersey. It's a, it's a street smart program. We have the director, Will Yardzab, who's been working in the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority as a planning assistant since 2016. But his most of his experience in life is 25 years as a law enforcement officer with the Randolph Township Police Department. So, so Will has seen both sides of the, the equation in terms of uh, pedestrian safety issues, the driver responsibility and pedestrian responsibility. And Street Smart combines all those factors together to make New Jersey a more safe place. The thing that makes Street Smart so unique in my mind is it takes a major state type program and can break it down one by one in each municipality. Each town has their own way of handling, their own way of doing things, all going toward the same goal of pedestrian safety. I'm gonna pass it off to you, Will, but I wanna thank you for joining us. You and I have worked together many times over the years, and I know yes, everything you've done has been very professional, very comprehensive, and at the same time, low key, let's put it that way. You're not a high pressure salesman, which you're telling people is the right thing to do. So thanks for joining us, Will. Thank you for having me really, and uh, we appreciate all the support we get from KMM, and I'm hoping this will be a professional and lighthearted uh, 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 presentation. So I'm gonna share my screen if that's okay. All right, are we all set there? So again, uh, I work for the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority. We are the Metropolitan Planning Organization for the 13 Northern counties of New Jersey. And we're federally funded, we don't sell anything. Uh, but our Street Smart program is a statewide program. So, uh, New Jersey has a significant issue with pedestrians being struck in either uh, their fatal crashes or their serious injury crashes. So although, again, this is our region for NJTPA, there are two other MPOs that cover the rest of the state. <coughs> and again, our Street Smart program was, uh, was the, the goal of it was to be a statewide program to reduce the behaviors that lead to pedestrian crashes. Uh, you see, I use the term crashes. Uh, accidents, even when I was a police officer throughout most of my career, they were called accidents. We're now going to crashes because there is a reason for them. And in most cases, they are preventable. So again, we have our, all of our different stakeholders within our region who determine where approximately 2 billion in federal uh, money goes to work on surface transportation issues. Um, all of these representatives you see here. And then a very small part of our, our uh, the work that we do is the Street Smart program. I mean, and I mean very small part. So we started Street Smart in 2013 and we wanted it to be a grassroots effort. Uh, we didn't want big government telling you what to do but we wanted the average everyday person with the help of either a TMA like KMM or a board of education or a business association or a police department to help people get the messaging out and change the behaviors that lead to the uh, pedestrian crashes. So when you go to our website, website bstreetsmartnj.org, you'll see that there's a host of information there we ask you to follow us on social media or follow the TMA uh, and get our messaging and then share that through the different uh, medias that, that the everyday citizen is involved in. Hey, Will, the, uh, when you say TMAs, uh, that's another thing I think that people may understand that every county that you're in has a TMA represented. There's eight TMAs in New Jersey 
and they cover the entire state. So you can work locally with your local TMA also, not just the middle sites. Correct. And again, as a police officer, I had no idea they existed. Uh, you know, one, one of our go-to agencies was AAA. We, we still work with them, of course, as do the TMAs. But the Transportation Management Associations are an invaluable tool that I uh, let police officers know about all the time because uh, it's most likely your safe routes to school coordinator. Uh, there's safety programs many more than just uh, pedestrian safety. Uh, and it will help you get a ride to places. So especially for people who uh, either rely on mass transit or are getting a little older and need some kind of ride share, the TMAs are, are a great way to go. So um, on our Street Smart website, we have a how-to guide, we have a campaign checklist. Uh, the key is to get as many people involved in the campaign uh, as you can but also do, as Bill stated, do what you want to do as much or as little. So we have campaigns that have been what we'll call a full campaign. Uh, the TMA or the police department will say, listen, we're going to do a campaign. We're going to do some observations. We're going to do really a study on how well pedestrian and driver behaviors change over a campaign period. In most cases, that's like an eight-week event. Uh, the first two weeks, uh, a survey can be sent out to see what people know about pedestrian safety, kind of get the temperature of the community, how important they feel it is, how they feel their local government is responding to the issues. They also will focus on usually one intersection, and they'll go out and take observations to see what the behaviors are the, between the drivers and the pedestrians without any intervention. After that, they'll hold some type of kickoff. It can be a grand kickoff on the steps of City Hall. Uh, Bill and I uh, and KMM have held those. And then it can be a press release or a proclamation to the local government just to let everyone know, listen, you're going to see Street Smart. You're going to see the messaging. You're going to see safety programs in your schools, maybe in your civic centers, in the business associations. We want to get these messages out. So everyone understands the law and they take a different perspective on what's going on. You know, most of my career, I had to drive uh, a fair amount to get to work. And then as a patrol officer, I was in my vehicle. We didn't have any foot patrol. So you get the windshield perspective and a person who may not drive much will have the pedestrian perspective. And we need to think about each other when we're out on the road, the cyclist, the pedestrian, the person on the scooter, person may be in a wheelchair, and of course the drivers. So we decided to get some messaging for both the driver and the pedestrian, and we don't, we don't blame anyone. Listen, uh, things happen. The key here is understand the law and understand how to be safe. We tried to take our messaging from uh, a review of the crash data. Uh, of course, distraction is a huge issue with uh, crashes in general. Uh, for pedestrians, speed is such a tremendous issue because, of course, the faster a car is going when it strikes someone, the less likely you will be to survive that crash. So these are our Drive Smart uh, for the driver messages in the green, and these are our 18-inch by 30-inch corrugated plastic signs. On the right, you see the, I'll call it the newly enacted law, because it was signed into law last year about safe passing, but it went into full effect as of March 1st this year. And that law tells drivers and other road users that you have to provide either four feet to someone on the side of the road or a bicyclist in the road if you're going to pass them. Slow down to 25 miles an hour if you can't give them that four feet. Or move over a lane if you have a lane to move over. And again, Let's just think about a pedestrian or a cyclist or a person on a scooter as our child, as our mother, our father, our aunt, our teacher. You know, I use the word pedestrian because I'm, I'm kind of back in that law enforcement mode, but these are just people. They're people. And we need to share the road and, and, and recognize that we all have a part to play here. Well, Will, there's, there's an article in the paper today that Rowan University has done a study 
that one in five drivers are driving distracted. That's 20%. So just think of the statistics there. If you're a, if you're a pedestrian or a bicyclist, the concern you must also have for your own safety is you don't know how these drivers are going to respond. So I think the education campaign we're talking about is for the pedestrians themselves to learn the rules and the laws and be careful. And obviously the drivers and the vehicles, that, that's the smart part that they have to be careful also. Stop being great, distracted. Great point, because uh, again, how many of us have driven home or driven somewhere? And when we get to our destination, we, we kind of look back and go, how did I even get here? Like you were just in a, this mode, this auto mode, and you really don't remember everything that occurred. And, and that is very dangerous. So uh, here are the messages for our pedestrians. Um, again, we have these in a variety of uh, items that can go out to the community, but these again are the 18 inch by 30 inch signs. And in this case, uh, what we do frequently, and we do this for free, is we will put the police department's patch onto the items and we'll give the police department those items in a digital format so they can send them out on social media. And then if they either have funding on their own or if they have the Division of Highway Traffic Safety pedestrian grant, they can purchase those materials and it gives it more of a hometown feel. We can also, if you, if the police department sends us pictures of those intersections, uh, as you see here with their own actors in it, we can put those onto those signs and those digital formats. So for example, we did it in, the, in Morris County in Chester, uh, real quaint downtown, really nice shops on both sides. We had the business association members come out and be our actors. And then in the background of some of these pictures, you would see the local businesses. So we're, we're promoting those local businesses and, and trying to make it a safer place. So uh, as we get back to the campaign itself, uh, we have that kickoff. And for the next four weeks, we try and hyper-focus and really inundate the community with education outreach. And in the final stages, some enforcement. Now, when I use the term enforcement, I don't mean automatically a ticket that will cost someone money or give them points in their license. Enforcement is whatever the local community determines. Uh, if a police officer stops you in your car, stops you as a pedestrian and says, listen, you just violated the law, but more importantly, what you did was extremely unsafe. Here's a tip card from StreetSmart, or here's a safe passive message from Division of Highway Traffic Safety. We want you to know what you did wrong and how to be safe. We're not giving you that ticket. We're going to educate you and you're going to be on your way. I still consider that an enforcement action. You know, especially when you stop that car and you walk up to that car, people are thinking, oh, this is not going to turn out well. And when you can walk away as a law enforcement officer and give them a piece of information and educate them, it's really a better, it's better for everyone. Well, it's so, going to work out better than if they actually struck a pedestrian. So uh, it's working out much better than that. Absolutely. And, and a great point, Bill. So if you do hold a kickoff event, of course, we have the local officials from my office, from the TMA, from the town that the campaign is taking place in. But we will also try and get people who have survived crashes or in, in a terrible tragedy where the surviving members of a family member who has been taken due to a pedestrian crash, and they will speak. Because again, when we get back to that pedestrian, it's a walker. It's a cyclist, it's a rider, it's a runner. And sometimes you need to hear that story and go, you know, my kid is out on his scooter. Um, my wife loves, likes to run. I like to walk my dog. These are all situations that people should be fearful of doing. But in New Jersey, statistically, 30%, uh, almost a third of all of our fatal crashes are pedestrian crashes. So we need to work on that. So here are some other campaign materials that we, we get out to the community. Uh, the coffee cup sleeve on the left, and then the upper uh, right top portion, the two sides of a tent card that can go in a restaurant or at the cash register. The bottom left is the bifold tip card. And in this case, it's in English and Spanish, but we have a few other languages we can place it into. And we would love to work with other communities who have different languages. If they'll help us translate, we, we want to meet the needs of everyone in New Jersey. Uh, there's been a real focus, and we intend on uh, meeting that uh, focus and that goal of meeting and helping everyone in all of the communities. There's been a lot of communities in New Jersey who have been underserved in the past, 
and and we're trying to change that. And the entire state is actually trying to change that. So uh, you'll do this four week campaign with education, outreach and enforcement. Uh, you'll then stop all of this hyperactivity, so to speak. And in the following two weeks, you'll go and do that survey again, and you'll go out and do the observations again, plug it into a spreadsheet and determine was there a statistical significance or um, change in behaviors based on everything that occurred. We've done studies at NJTPA through Rutgers and Rowan universities. Uh, they took all of these uh, towns and combined all of the data and they found that uh, there was a great increase shortly after a campaign in safety, both for the driver and the pedestrian. And we have reports on our website and our B Street Smart New Jersey website that explain everything and, and give you the hard numbers. These are just a few of the towns uh, that we've worked with in Middlesex. Uh, I think I also missed uh, uh, Perthamboy, Carteret, and Piscataway. But again, whether you want to do a big campaign or your traffic bureau simply wants to hand out materials or your citizen activist says, I'm going to spread this across Facebook or Twitter. If we reach two people more than we reached yesterday, we're making, we're making advances here. And well, that is the key. I think you're talking about, Will. we always talk about the three E's in terms of safety, education, enforcement, and engineering. Uh, you have the background, of course, in enforcement. The TMAs are very active with the education part. Uh, Middlesex County is going to be the first county to actually endorse the Vision Zero uh, crusade that's going on to try and reduce it. This is a big deal right now because we all see the data about how dangerous it is as in New Jersey for pedestrians. And uh, your education and your enforcement things, your street smart fits right into that category of how we can really get one person at a time to change your behavior. And as I said earlier, Street Smart is such a small part of the budget NJTPA. The vast majority goes towards studies or infrastructure changes. So we also encourage towns that are getting a major upgrade. Uh, upgrade. Maybe they're downtown, several intersections are being uh, upgraded with pedestrian heads and new striping. Maybe they're going into a complete streets uh, type of theme, which again, serves all of the people. Not, it's not motor vehicle centric. And we tell those communities, listen, that will take a few years to get going before shovels in the ground and that project is completed. Why don't we do some street smart activity to make people a little safer, make the drivers more aware of the other road users, let the construction uh, continue and be completed and go back out there now and educate people. People sometimes don't even understand how to use the push button uh, pedestrian signal. They think they hit the button and it should automatically change. That's not the case. It has to uh, there's a certain cycle has to go through. So education, outreach, and, and people understanding each other is, is the key. I think another key part that you brought up before was also the, uh, the, the speed, such a big issue. Uh, when they first started putting the stop for pedestrian uh, bollards in the middle of parking lots at shopping centers, I kind of thought they were a joke and get run over all the time. But they actually work because people are going slow enough to be aware. And they actually work really well there. They should work just as well on roads that people have to slow down for. And I think that's part of uh, what we're looking at is how we can reduce some of the speed. You know, one of the issues we have in Jersey is, you know, there's no retraining for drivers. So it's been almost, I think it's been 11 years when the law changed in New Jersey from yield to a pedestrian to stop for a pedestrian. So I know that's just, those are two simple words, yield or stop, but that's a big deal. And when the pedestrian knows the law and says, oh, the vehicle has to stop for me, but the driver is like, well, I have to yield to them. And that kind of means if I'm in a hurry, I can go by them. Uh, if I'm not in a hurry, I can stop if I want to be nice, which is not the case. So the education part it is key. And again, getting people out of whatever perspective they have, please look at the other side of the coin and, and think about that. So many years we had many of those in the road signs run over and when we had when we did find the person who did it i said that could have been a person this was a reflectorized sign you know in the middle of the road imagine if it was a little kid wearing you know something that would blend into the road it's just it's, it's absolutely crazy and and you know things are changing we're educating people 
the great work at the TMAs. Uh, we're all in this together and, and that's the key. So here you see some of our older messaging. So we still have the heads up phones down, but we had a lot going on in our, in our program materials and we've, uh, we've changed it up, but here are some events that uh, have taken place in Middlesex County. We also can do digital uh, billboards or banners. So we can take a message. You tell us what banner size you want. We will again give you that print ready artwork or in the case, some towns have access to digital billboards and they'll tell us what the message they want. They'll give us their police department patch and we'll uh, put these together for them. So we are here to help in any way we can. Uh, and we work uh, in conjunction with the TMA. And you know the TMA can't be anywhere, just everywhere, just like NJTPA can't be everywhere. So if the TMA is tied up in this part of the county or with this town, then I go over and offer some street smart materials or, or ideas to the other part of the town and vice versa. So uh, we, we're all here to help and we encourage people, please ask questions. If you have a new idea on how we can get the messages out, let us know. We've worked with some major employers. Uh, we worked with Hackensack uh, Hospital uh, a few years ago. They sent it out to all of their employees. They had it all throughout their hospitals and buildings give us ideas. We want to work with people. Well, one of the things that we're going to bring also, the TMAs you keep talking about, Will, we have a TMA council called TMAC, tmac.org. If you don't know where the TMA is located in your particular county, just go onto that website, tmac.org, and it'll show you, then you, you look at the counties broken down. Many of the, many of the TMAs have more than one county. Uh, we have obviously just Middlesex, but at the same time, It'll give you direction and how to get directly to them and how to contact the individual TMAs. And, and for those towns who uh, say, well, that, that sounds like a big undertaking. Again, please remember, this is like a, Street Smart is like a buffet. Pick and choose what you want. And if you say, well, we don't really have a downtown. Well, almost every jurisdiction has a school in their, in their jurisdiction. This is a great program to do around a school, right? You have a large population of people who are pedestrians, also people on bikes in, in many cases. So you can focus on a school in the spring of this year. And then in the fall, focus on a different school. Uh, really, there, there's no end to where you can do this. And again, the key is involve people, involve everyone and everyone uh, and anyone. So we had a TMA who had a large dog walking group in a, in a small town. And they blasted it all over their Facebook and among, among their friends. This is the key. Educate people on what the law is. But more importantly, we all need to take a breath and say, yes, I'm on my way to work. Or I'm, I'm going to pick up my children. Or I'm walking to a shop. Try and do what is safe and, and what is lawful. So, and It's also and, important to understand what you just said. Is uh, the leadership part it can come from the local elected officials. It can come from the public safety department, but it can come also from uh, PTA people who want to do something in their town or dog walking people. There's any time, anybody who's very interested in trying to get safer pedestrian passage throughout their community, they can inspire these other people to get involved. The police department, the, 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 the local towns, all these type of things. Because once you start talking about pedestrian safety, people understand how important it is. And then you can make some changes in people's behavior. And so many towns are going to um, a pedestrian safety action committee, or we called it a, a transportation advisory committee in Randolph Township. You'll get a member of the local government, uh, maybe a council person to sit on that uh, committee. Uh, you'll get someone from the police department and then several people uh, from the public who will sit on a committee. They may meet once a month, once a quarter, and they'll discuss issues that maybe the local government is not aware of or they will bring a fix that you didn't even realize was so simple. I mean, KMM is very familiar with, and they use it in places with the flag program. You have a, a location where a lot of people are crossing. It's not signalized. You put a, uh, a, you know, a container, uh, usually a five gallon pail on each side of the intersection on a post. You put those orange flags in that you'd see at a construction site. And just to make that pedestrian more visible, you you're going to cross, you pick that up, you look, of course, 
you cross safely, you have that in your hand, you drop it on the other side in the bucket. I mean, what a simple but great idea. And, and again, uh, all of these things in combination, uh, when NJTPA is going to come in and, and do a uh, work with the local county and there's going to be a big construction project down to let's just do a flag program around this one senior building because they're always crossing to get across the street to the pharmacy or to the food store. Just uh, there's lots of things people can do very low cost or simply by sharing our messages, no cost. So we encourage everyone to get involved, learn what the law is, have a discussion at dinner, have a discussion if you're in your car, when you're at work, hey, you know, there's a real issue with pedestrians being struck and injured or killed in New Jersey. What can I do to, to, to stop that or to help uh, end that? And thanks for pointing out that TMAs do work for our programs are no cost. I mean, yes. That's an important part. That's a, I think that's important to hear that we're not selling you something, we're giving you ideas and letting them use them. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you, Will. I really appreciate your, your presentation. I think uh, you've covered a lot of the bases. Uh, do we have any questions that came in at all, Lynn or Christina? Uh, I don't see any questions at this time, but okay. uh, this, this was recorded. It'll be on our website within 48 hours. And if you have any questions, you can just send them to me at lquavis at kmm.org and we will get you the answers. C-U-E-V-A-S, right? Yes. Okay. Well, once again, Will, I'll give you a chance to just to wrap it all up. But thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're learning these webinars and podcasts that we've been doing have actually helped spread the word about these type of programs. The social media has been a very successful tool that TMAs have been using during the pandemic. We've learned to use it much more than we ever did before. No, thank, thank you for inviting me again. Thank you for the work that you do. It's, it's just astonishing how many uh, people don't know what a TMA is, what they do, how they can help them. So I encourage you, uh, go on KMM's website, learn, uh, learn, learn. You, you may have an older person that needs some of their, um, some of their services. You may say, you know, I, I'm thinking about going, uh, using my bicycle more. Uh, what, what's, what do I need to do to be safe? Uh, they do the bike uh, skills courses, the bike rodeos, just, uh, please take advantage of all of these things. And, and thank you, Bill and, and Lynn and Christina. Really appreciate coming on. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Will.